Today, we're going to introduce you to the concept of non-destructive modeling. So in our Blender scene over here, now that you know how to navigate it, press numpad one. And if you don't have a, a numpad, so you can press that squiggly line next to the one and choose front. Now that we're in the front, you can tell by the blue line and the red line, we see our default cube looking like a square because we're looking at it from one angle. The first thing I want you to do is press tab to go into edit mode. Now you can also go to edit mode this way. Once you're in this mode, you can right click because you've got, still got all the vertices selected, right click, and we are gonna merge vertices at center. Now all those vertices have become one single vertex, which is awesome. The next thing you wanna do with this vertex is press E. When you're in edit mode, E is for extrude. And I'm just moving the mouse around like a crazy person, but now I'm gonna press X. And now it's locked on the X axis, which is great. And now that I've got it there, I'm gonna press E and I'm just gonna extrude and make a basic mushroom outline. And please, please do have fun with this. Um, there's no such thing as a perfect mushroom. So don't worry about spending too much time on this. Just get the basic outline done. And let me just show you this. Okay, I've made some mistakes here on purpose to demonstrate something. One thing you do want to do is you want to make sure that this vertex over here is on the blue line. So now that I click there, I can just press G to grab it and I can just move it so it touches this line. And then I'm just going to zoom in with my mouse wheel until I get all the way here and just make sure it's touching. There we go. Now let's look at the shape. It's okay, but it feels like I should probably have a, a, another vertice over here. So I can just select these two vertices over here, right click, and we'll choose subdivide. By having subdivide, I can reshape this just a little bit. And let's start off with this to see how it looks. Right, so now I'm going to press tab to go into object mode, because once you're in object mode, you can make use of your modifier stack. And this is, so this, what we just done now is technically destructive modeling, which means we, whatever we have done is permanent. We can't change it. Non-destructive modeling gives us the freedom and flexibility to revert back at any point we want. And this is a big deal, especially if you've tried sculpting and you make one small mistake and before you know it, everything is an absolute mess. So the first thing you want to do is use the screw modifier. Now, caution, do not use the skin modifier once you've added some of these modifiers because it will break your system. Just use the screw modifier. In this example, the it, skin modifier is awesome, but not for what we're doing here. Um, it, right, so now we've got a nice looking basic mushroom. Problem with this mushroom is that it's a little bit uh, pixelated. Let's smooth this puppy up. And we can use subdivision surface. It's already looking better. Now, pro tip, you can leave your viewport on one and you can render it out on a much higher value. Uh, so it looks perfect without slowing down your computer. But if you have a beefy machine, you can also chuck that up like that. Now, as much as I like this mushroom, and I really do, uh, this is a tutorial. So I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode, and I'm going to select this over here. This is called your x-ray mode. And now it looks like our mushroom is one big hologram. And this is only for editing purposes. Now I'm going to introduce you to a new, co co really cool tool. It is called proportional editing. So once you select this on, you can tell by the blue icon being on, when you select an object and you press G to move it, um, you'll notice a circle. Yours might be a little bit smaller. You can just scroll your mouse wheel in and out to adjust the size, which adjusts the field of influence. So if it's this small, it's only going to affect itself. But if you make it bigger, it's going to start affecting other ones around it, which is a really cool tool. And we could technically use this to animate this to do things like this if we wanted to, which is quite cool. I think I have a vertices animate video with a monkey going crazy, so this is technically possible and really cool. But uh, anyways, let's, uh, let's try and reshape this in a way that we like. I don't really want to, but fine, I will. So let's select this over here, and let's say we just want this like that. And you can reshape it. You can also change the shape of your mushroom. 
and you can create a, a thousand variants. You get the idea. I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to press tab to go into object mode. I'm going to turn x-ray off. And uh, I'm just going to look at the top here. Oh, it looks like we can fix that. That doesn't look right. So how do we fix it? We press tab, go into edit mode. And I'm just going to zoom in over here. It must be simple human error that I made. I'm going to press G. So I press G, moving my mouse like crazy. Then I'm pressing Z, Z, to lock to the Z axis. And I'm just going to bring this down slightly. And then I'm going to turn this off. And what I'll do over here is I'll subdivide. Press numpad 1, select this vertex over here. And maybe just lift it up a bit. <coughs> and the idea, currently proportional editing is turned on, so that's not good. So let's turn it off for this. And we're just going to lift this up slightly. like that and that should that should do it now the reason why this happened is because we had proportional editing turned on so how do we fix that I'm gonna press numpad one I'm gonna hold on okay that, that's fine yeah numpad one we're gonna go over here and now I'm just gonna select the single vertex make sure proportional editing is turned off and I'm gonna press G and I'm gonna press X to lock on the x-axis and I'm just gonna bring it in to about there Let's zoom in and make sure it's perfect, almost perfect, G, X, on the line, not past the line, on the line. And let's see if it looks right. Oh, that looks crisp. A little bit flat on the top. We could address it. Um, let's play around with this until we get the design we like. But, uh, hold on. Numpad one. G Z. And I'm just eyeballing this. Uh, I do think proportional editing is needed just a little bit of here. So I'm going to turn that back on, go to the front orthographic view, G. And I'm just going to pull this out a bit. All right, I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to leave it for now. Right, so the next thing we want to do is we know that no mushroom is perfect. So we're going to add another a modifier called the displacement modifier and we're going to press new and then we're going to go to our texture properties over here and we're going to change this to dum 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 let's use clouds now isn't that a beautiful mushroom virtually unrecognizable so we're just going to maybe increase the size so it's a bit bigger and then we just need to go over here to our modifier stack where we've got textures and we're going to adjust the strength. Maybe to, you can play around with it. I'm going to make it 0 0.7. Oh, that's still too much. Let's go down. 0 0.3. There we go. So it's got just a little bit of imperfection. That's the idea behind that. Right, so I'm quite happy with that. But we also need to add the solidify modifier for a special material effect we're going for. So we're going to quickly add that. And I'm going to make the thickness 0 0.03. No, and we'll probably adjust this just now. But we'll just leave it on that for now. Let's see if even thickness freaks out. Yep. So leave even thickness off. We're going to flip the normals. And we're going to make the offset 1. And it will make sense what this does in a second because uh, it's going to make sense when we mess with the materials. Right, now that we've got our base mushroom over here, it's beautiful. Imagine trying to sculpt this. could take you some time, um, especially with our modifications. We can modify this quite quickly. Uh, we're going to go to our shader editor, 
And in our shader editor, just to make sure we can see color, we're going to move from our viewport to our uh, material viewport. Or we can change to our render viewport. I'm going to use the render viewport and I'm going to select the light over here. I'm going to press G. It's up there already, so it's fine. Um, I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh Plane, S20. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. It's looking real good. Now that we've got this mushroom, um, we're going to try and make this a tune shader. So we first want to create the outline around the mushroom, which is quite easy enough to do. Um, all we need to do is go over here. I'm going to call this over here the outline. And normally an outline is black. You can choose the color you like. I'm going to make it black. And <clears throat> I like my outline to look cartoonish, so I'm going to turn off any subsurface specular. I'm going to max out the roughness, remove the sheen tint and the clear coat, and I think we are good to go. That's already looking quite beautifully flat. Um, right, so the next thing we want to do with our outline complete, we just want to make sure back face culling is turned on. And we want to pass the index to 1. Now that we've done that, we can add the new color. Boom. And look at that. New color currently is white. That's looking pretty good. But the white, as you can tell, let's change the color so you can see. The problem with this is we've got a nice tune outline, but we don't have a nice um, tune looking style here. So we're going to quickly address that. All right, so to keep things simple, instead of going through something a bit more advanced, uh, the main thing we want to do is uh, we want to limit how the colors change based on how the light shines on this object, which means we need to use a diffuse shader. So I'm going to press Shift A, go to my shaders, and we're going to look for diffuse. Boom, boom, boom. That's looking pretty good. And because we are rendering everything out in Eevee, which you have to be, uh, we're going to connect this to a uh, shader to RGB, which is extremely powerful. So I'm going to press Shift A. In the search bar, I'm going to type in S-H-A-D-E-R to RGB. Boom. Unique to Eevee. And we're going to connect that quite nicely like this. Boom. And now we want to connect this to a color ramp. Shift A. And we're going to type in color ramp. And I'm just going to delete this quickly for a second. And I'm going to connect the color to the factor. And uh, right, just for interest sake, I'm going to connect that there. And I'm going to change this to, I don't know, blue. And currently, you can still see different shades of blue based on the light. And that's no good. If we change to constant, here we go. Now we're talking. But obviously, we want this to be you know, a quicker way is just to select this color. Copy it, Control C, go to this color, paste it, and then we can just uh, make it a little darker. There we go. And we can just copy this over here, select the floor, delete that and we can paste it in over here and connect it as well. And we can mess with the light and let's make it a spotlight. And there you have a very quick and easy tune shader. Now if you want to change the, the thickness of the lines, this is where the fun begins. We can just go to our solidify and we can change the thickness of here. If we want it thicker, we can go make it go up. If you want it to be thinner, 
You can make it as thin as you like. You can make it even thinner than this. You can go 0 0.01. It should be a tenth of the size. Or, no, sorry, 0 0.001. And now you really have to zoom in to really see those lines. But I'm going to leave mine on 0 0.2. Adjust yours. Oh, 0 0.02, sorry. Adjust yours to the thickness that you think is appropriate. And the cool thing about that is as you move around the object, it's going on all the edges. Now, if we want to take this to the extreme, because we did non-destructive modeling, we can just minimize that, open up the displacement, and we can go crazy here. Now, if we went insane with our displacement, this is how a mushroom would look, and just like that. And the best part about this, it's non-destructive. So if you feel like you made a mistake, you can just uh, reset, or you can just um, disable this, or delete it, and then you've got this base shape, which is quite cool. So it's as easy as that. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.